Hello everyone. Well, I thought it was about high time I unboxed this AEG FX9 cordless cleaner because the first time you got a glimpse of this was Christmas Day 2019. So it's now January 2022. So I thought it's high time I unboxed this and had a play with it. I've gained several pounds since I unwrapped this machine which uh, is why I'm wearing black to try and disguise it but you're not fooled are you yes I'm fat sorry about that folks I'm fat at the moment right I um, little disclaimer I've had this out I did give it a charge but I've not actually used it so I'm hoping it still works I'm I think this is still a model you can buy it's that long so it's it looks a little bit messier than it would have done because obviously I've had the charger un, you know, unwrapped and plugged in to charge up the battery. And I think with this machine, it's a non-removable battery or at least a non-user removable battery. It's, I don't think it's got swappable batteries. We've got a quick start guide showing us how to put the charging stand together. That's right, I remember now, it's all coming back to me. It does have a charging stand. We've also got main instruction book, safety and troubleshoot guide, guarantee, and uh, AEG exclusive care leaflets. Let's take out the machine. I would call this a premium cordless machine. And I must say, I think I did have a quick look at it when I unboxed it on Christmas Day 2019. And I did think at the time, well, it's a handsome looking device. And it seems to be a solid machine. It's not ultra light, but it seems well made. But I don't know how it performs because I've never used it. Okay, we'll just do this as quick as I can. This is the charging base, part of it anyway. This is some sort of flexible piece. Here we have a three-in-one nozzle with dusting brush, crevice tool, and you can open out the crevice tool to form your upholstery nozzle. So it's basically a modern version of the AEG slash Electrolux butterfly tool. There's a little swing ticket there that would have been attached to the machine. And underneath we've got part of the storage and uh, charging stand and finally the main carpet and hard floor nozzle there is an additional cleaning toolkit which I'll show you in this video that I did buy as an optional extra okay well everything's out of the box let's get it put together and uh, see if the battery is still gonna hold some charge after almost two years of sitting in the box. Okay folks, the first thing we need to do is assemble the charging stand, which comes in two pieces plus the mains charger. There's a sticker on the base which you need to peel off. So, what we need to do now is, I think first of all, we need to remove this piece of packaging here just on the metal part of this stand. Let's peel that off. And then we take the base and the metal part, push it through the hole, and you'll see there's a little area there. So it just pushes down like that. There's nothing to screw up. That's in place. So that's the assembly of the charging slash storage stand, but of course, in order for us to be able to charge the cleaner, we need to connect the mains adapter. So obviously this needs to be near a mains socket. There's uh, approximately one and a half meters of mains cable, I'd say there. At the top of the charging stand, you'll see a little plug symbol and a socket here where we plug in the mains adapter. So just insert it into the hole, take the cable and pass it through this little slot here at the top. Down the back, 
of the charging stand here. There's two other slots at the bottom. So pass the cable through one of the slots and then just coil it round, loop it, and then bring the cable out of the other side, like so. That's all we have to do. We can now plug in the mains adapter and we'll be ready to charge the AEG vacuum. Before I start to charge the cleaner, I need to attach the main motorized floor head. So it goes with the gray button at the front. Just locate it on the base of the machine, like so. And you need to push it firmly. You'll hear a click, like so. So that's basically all we need to do to assemble the cleaner. The charging base also incorporates storage for the two small cleaning tools and for some reason AEG have put blanking caps over the storage slots so you can remove them if your nails are long enough you should be able to take them off by hand if not use a flathead screwdriver put them somewhere safe because you never know you might need them again and then we can put the three-in-one tool and the angled tool on the base so they're stored ready to use. Once the cleaner and charging base are fully assembled, we can give the AEG FX9 its initial charge and AEG recommend you charge it for 24 hours before its first use. After its initial 24 hour charge, obviously it's not going to need quite so long to charge up. It'll depend on how long you use the machine in between charges, but 24 hours is the recommended period the very first time you charge the machine. So I suggest you do that to ensure a longer life for the battery. So we've got the base plugged in, we've got the cleaner. So just place it on the charging base, slide it down and you'll find it stands up on its own. You'll know it's charging when this light here starts to pulsate, but you can see here it's not pulsating. The body of this cleaner moves up and down to give you flexibility when cleaning, and at the moment it's in the up position so it's not making contact with the charging unit. So we need to lower the body by pressing the button at the top and gently lowering it down. And you can see the lights flashing here to show we've made contact with the charging unit and here we have the battery symbol showing the state of charge. Because I've had this charging previously, I'm almost at full charge. When it is fully charged, the lights go out as they have in this instance. This particular model is a 36 volt version and according to AEG on high power mode it'll give you approximately 17 minutes of runtime. On normal mode approximately 30 minutes and on long runtime mode, approximately 60 minutes, but that's based on AEG internal testing. So obviously in a domestic environment, in day-to-day -day use, figures may vary. Okay, because I pre-charged this cleaner before I unboxed it, it's fully charged, ready to show you it in action. So when you want to use the machine, simply lift it off the charging base and start cleaning. Now it's certainly got a bit of weight to it this cleaner, it's not the lightest cordless machine I've picked up but it, then it's probably not the heaviest, certainly a lot lighter than a mains powered upright would be and it's got a nice sturdy handle for you to carry it up the stairs. Now this is the upright configuration and in theory if you're very short you can use it like this but it does have an adjustable handle so if you just see, well it's hard to see because I'm covering it up, but there is a button here on the handle. So you press that and then you can raise the handle up to its full extent. And as you can see, I've raised the handle, but I've also raised the suction unit. So although it's high up, it's still fairly easy to use. Now used in this configuration, it's ideal for getting under low furniture. But if you want it to be a bit lighter to hold in the hand, we can move this main motor unit down by pressing on the button here and we can move it right down to the bottom and now it is very light in the hand all the weight is at the lower part of the cleaner so if you find vacuums hard to push in this upright configuration it is very easy to maneuver but of course if you need to reach under your low furniture a touch of the button and you can just move this unit 
and I say get under low furniture, press the button again, slide it back down and you're ready to clean. So the main motorised head is suitable for carpets and hard floors. So that's for your carpets and hard floors, but what about above floor cleaning? Well, this particular machine has a little trick up its sleeve. So to use this machine for above floor cleaning, for your upholstery, your lightweight dusting, etc., you can use it with the built-in internal hose. First of all, we need to collapse the handle down to the lowest position, and then pick up the cleaner and remove the main floor nozzle. We can pull back the actual main body of the machine until it locks into position. Press on the grey button. It's going to be a bit stiff because it's new. There we are. And now we have a handheld device. But again, it's fairly large and fairly weighty. Now onto the end here, we can attach the nozzle. So you can do your dusting like this, or the nozzle will go on the other way. Needs to be pushed on firmly. You can open out the wings and now we can use it for upholstery. But there's another little trick up the sleeve of this AEG because that is a bit awkward. We have a built-in hose, which is much easier to use. So with a cleaner in one hand, if you're left or right-handed, it doesn't matter which way you hold the machine. You can pull out the hose and use the crevice tool that's now attached for your nooks and crannies. But of course, we can pop it on the other way. And now we've got the dusting tool, or again, open out the wings and you have an upholstery nozzle. So this way, you have a built-in hose, which I think is a very good idea. And like some cleaners where you have to attach a hose separately, if it comes with a hose at all. But with the AEG, it's permanently on board. You can't fit any motorized tool to the end of the hose. To fit a motorized tool, you have to have the hose retracted. There is a smaller motorized tool available and I'll show you the additional toolkit you can get for this machine, which increases its versatility. For stair cleaning, you can either use the hose. So for stairs, the best nozzle to use, let's put it in between my legs like that to hold it. The best nozzle to use is this one. Pick up the cleaner again, and you can clean your stairs like that. But you can also clean the stairs using the main motorized head. Just put it back, there we go, slide it on, click it in place, and with the handle collapsed, you can actually clean your stairs like this, holding the hand grip and the carry handle, and you can go up your stairs in this fashion and give your stairs a deep clean using the motorized brush. To increase the versatility of the AEG FX9, you can buy this optional toolkit. So let's have a look at what we get. First of all, you get a nice handy storage case. Inside the case, we get an additional crevice tool for your nooks and crannies. We also get a dusting tool. And there we go, I managed to remove the packaging. So a nice long dusting brush with a soft velour strip, ideal for hard surface cleaning, Venetian blinds, etc. You also get this small combined crevice tool, very short crevice tool with a little brush attachment that comes out. And finally, another motorized head. So this is a mini motorized tool. Again, it has an electric motor like the main head supplied on the cleaner, but this is for your above floor cleaning, for your stair carpets, upholstery, pet bedding, etc. You've got a removable revolving brush there in the middle. Fairly soft brushes, and as you can see, it won't clean across the full width of the nozzle. We've got quite a gap either side. The mini motorized tool can't be used with the hose extended. It has to be connected to the machine like this, but it is possible to use the machine as a handheld with the mini motorized tool. Switch it on. And you can see the brushes on the head rotate. So you could use this on your stairs 
and on your upholstery as well but you have got the full weight of the machine but having two handles it is fairly easy to use so you need to press on the button to remove it bringing a bit of the hose with it so this is the nozzle you'll use for your carpet and hard floor cleaning again this brush roll does slide out you don't need any tools you can just twist the end here and remove the brush roll if it gets tangled up with hairs and you've got two types of brushes this grey brush is very soft ideal for dust on hard surfaces and you've got a shorter but stiffer red brush designed for carpet cleaning you've also got a little velour strip at the back as well two roller wheels at the front and two larger wheels at the back so that fits on until it clicks into position make sure you hear a click otherwise it won't make connection and operate you'll know it's working because obviously the lights will illuminate at the front of the nozzle and the nozzle will actually rotate the brushes will rotate so I'll switch it on show you it going The controls are conveniently situated at the front of the handle so you can switch the machine on and off, adjust the mode from minimum, medium and maximum and you have an automatic setting where the cleaner will adjust the mode for you. Good. When you first switch on the cleaner the default mode is medium which should be adequate for most surfaces. On some surfaces, such as lightweight rugs, you might need to select minimum and for a deeper clean, you can select maximum. I'm going to try it on the default medium setting first on my plush pile Saxony carpet. Now this carpet has often defeated many cordless and mains powered upright cleaners that just can't cope with this pile. They either stall or they'll work on the minimum setting only, not on maximum. If I put them on maximum suction, the brushes automatically switch off. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this AEG, but I'm going to try it on the default medium setting to start the initial test. On this particular pile, I have to say, although the brushes are rotating, it is struggling a bit on medium. So in my home for this particular carpet, I think I'll have to use this machine on its minimum setting. So let's try that. So on medium, also on minimum setting, it's fairly easy to push. The brushes are still stalling ever so slightly. It's nice and quiet though, this cleaner. But it does seem to be skipping across the carpet a bit. It doesn't seem to be giving a deep clean. I'm going to switch it to automatic. I could hear the motor changing tone as I push the machine along. It's still not very good on this particular pile. Better than some I've tried. But I can feel the head lifting up as I push it. It's not maintaining contact with the carpet. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I've had worse, but I think the fault is this carpet. I know the rest of my house that has much shorter pile carpet, I'm sure this machine will be fine on, probably even on maximum, it'll, it'll still work fine. But it's just, unfortunately, with this particular Saxony pile, and it's not just this machine, a lot of cleaners will not work very well on it. But it's not too bad. Let's have a look at the dirt disposal method. As with most cordless cleaners, this is a bagless machine. I have seen a bagged version of this, but I don't think it's available in the UK. You may be able to buy the bagged unit to fit, retrofit onto a bagless machine. I'm going to see if I can get one. So you can convert a bagless machine into a bagged and use it 
either way you want, best of both worlds. But as far as I know, the bagged version of this is not available to buy in the United Kingdom, not officially anyway. So here is the bagless unit, nice sort of smoked plastic so you can see as it's filling up. There's a maximum fill line on the side there, a button on the top to remove the whole bagless container, comes off fairly easily. And then to empty the machine, we've got a little push button here at the bottom. So you can push that and then open it up. It's quite stiff because it's brand new. You can see though, I have vacuumed this carpet yesterday. I've only done a small area, but that's quite a lot of dirt. And look inside there. That's pretty good. And there's some very fine powder, which to me feels like a SIBO duo carpet cleaning powder that I've used on this carpet. But that was a long time ago. Many different vacuum cleaners have been over this area of carpet since, but it is finding extra dirt. As you can see, it's all pretty messy in there. There are filters that you need to maintain on this machine, as with all bagless cleaners. The filter that requires monthly cleaning is located at the base of the dust container. So you're gonna get your hands dirty to even access the filter. So we need to open up the flap here and we can see this filter here. So that's washable, make sure it's dry. It's got 24 hours printed on it. So it has to dry for 24 hours before you can put it back in the machine. Always make sure the filter is dry before using it again. If any water gets into the motor, you could have a ruined vacuum. So once a month, it's recommended to wash this filter here. Goes in that way with the black layer uppermost. Make sure it's properly seated. You can give the container a rinse out as well. But there's another filter as well located in the machine itself, an AEG say every two months for cleaning this filter. So that just comes out, rinse that under running water, shake it out and leave it to dry. So that's your pre-motor filter there and that fits in just over the motor unit on the machine itself. So it's just that small amount of dirt. There's dust on the outside of the container and everything. So if you want to be very, very clean about it, use a wet wipe every time you empty the machine, have a wet wipe handy, give it a wipe over, make sure it's dry, and then put it back on the cleaner. Just out of interest, I'm going to measure the suction power of this AEG at the end of the hose using my suction gauge. Now an average cylinder vacuum cleaner, a mains powered cylinder vacuum cleaner, would measure around 80 on the gauge and that's for a pneumatic Henry. So it'll be interesting to see what results we get with this cleaner. I'm going to see what it's like on minimum, medium and maximum suction power. There is dirt in the container, a bit more dirt than there was at the beginning of the video because I've used the cleaner a bit more, but the filter is still relatively clean so it shouldn't affect the suction at the end of the hose. So the first result you'll see on the gauge will be the cleaner at minimum, then medium and then maximum. On its maximum setting, this cleaner peaked at around 66 on the suction gauge, which I think is pretty impressive for a cordless machine. But of course, if you use this cleaner on maximum all the time, you're going to get limited runtime and you may reduce the life of the battery if you're constantly using it on maximum. In my experience of using many cordless cleaners, maximum is very seldom needed. I always find that the medium setting is more than enough for your day-to-day -day cleaning. Well, it's early days yet, 
So I can't give you my full verdict on this AEG cordless cleaner just yet. I'll have to use it around my home a lot more. I haven't even tested it on hard floors yet. But I know it's not very good on this particular carpet. I've just used it on my other pile of carpet outside in the hall. The rest of my home, much shorter pile. And it works fine on that, on all settings, on automatic, even on maximum. And I can feel it's got a bit of agitation. But I can't use anything but minimum on the carpet I'm standing on with this particular cleaner. It's like many cordless machines, they're just cut out. They don't like plush pile Saxony carpet. But first impressions, I quite like this. It does seem pretty well made. I like the fact you can configure it to use as a handheld. I like the fact it's got a built-in hose. And the dust emptying does seem a little bit easier than the Miele Triflex, which I'd put in the similar category to this AEG. They're both premium cordless machines, although this AEG can be found a lot cheaper when it's on offer. But all in all, as I say, first impressions, pretty good. It's a smart looking machine and uh, it's relatively quiet as well. And as I said, it feels pretty solid. And I do like the way you can adjust it. Just at the touch of a button, you can change the position of the suction unit, which is very handy. So I'll reserve my judgment until I've used this machine a lot more. I'll be doing an update video, as I said, later on. So please subscribe, click the bell icon, and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So for the time being, that's it from me and the AEG FX9. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.